looking for great quality clothing and prices to suit your budget then head on down to OCA Fashion and Gift Boutique located at 94 Eastern Main Road in St. Augustine. We offer clothing and accessories for everything from brunch, clubbing, showers and so much more. We are the sole distributors for Savage Black Hair Shampoo Dye, your five minute hair color solution. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram or call us at 473-4OCA or 489-SOCA. OCA Fashion and Gift Boutique for unbelievable finds. Hospital, it's a nice little ball played through. Early danger for the Southern Oilers. It wasn't such a convincing clearance, but they got the job done in the end. And it's an early corner here for the Sharks. And of course, it is going to be an attacking midfielder. Hospital has to take it. He has a beautiful left foot. He has a lot of vision, and he executes very well. So he is another bright spark within this Tobago Sharks. Eleven. And it was cleared away there by the Southern Oilers wall for another corner for the Sharks. And it's swung in once again here by Hospitalis. This time it's a lot deeper and it's nice and it's headed over the bar. He was absolutely free on the back post there. I think it was actually Lukeman Brooks who got his head on that one but just got under it. And it sailed over the bar. But that's the threat of the Tobago Sharks. A lovely played in ball from Hospitalis deep to the back post. Lukeman got there. And he just couldn't convert it. And the Oilers get away with yet another one. Some early pressure here from the Tobago Sharks. And the rhythm section kicks in as they always do. Bringing that vibe to the atmosphere here in the Marvin Lee Stadium. And it's a throw in here for the Oilers. Russell controls nicely, tries some skill in the midfield and gets through well. And it's played over the top but should be cleared up here. Had some composed defense, but I think that will be a foul there. And is here is Lukeman Brooks who had that early chance. You know, the header over to Jabari Ayeng, who really is a composed midfielder, alongside Kwasi Williams. Who they score two goals, and that ball slips in. Nicely there, but it's well recovered in the end by Shamar Mondi, who initially made the mistake. And again, he has to do the defensive work. And this one rolls all the way through to Kevin Graham. As I was saying earlier in his last outing, Gracie Williams did score two goals in the midfield for the Tobago Sharks. So is a good midfielder as well as he can get in on the goals and Lukeman loses out on it and here's an opportunity for the Southern Oilers can they put some sort of pressure on the Tobago Sharks defense it's a nice looking ball there from Mark Griffith but there wasn't anybody in the box really to attack it Chike Ahing trying to beat his man but Kadeem Mason handled the ball in his recovery of the ball and illegally takes it back and, and the two players just high-fiving each other you do expect this one to be a bit friendly, I mean, I know, of course, both teams want to win. You always want to win when you step out on the football pitch, but knowing that you really don't have to put too much of, what's the word I want to look, fire or facity, if that even is a word, into this one, because you don't want to risk getting injured. You don't want to risk injuring anybody else in the tournament, but really just to keep your momentum, to get some match fitness. So I don't expect to see too many rush tackles or 
any sort of controversy in this one, but the game of football is so emotional that regardless of what's on the line, when you're on the pitch, your heart really does come out and your emotions can really get the best of you sometimes, but I really do hope to see a clean game here. You know, Marvin Lee has Emmanuel Russell back doing his defensive duties, of course. He's involved in futsal in Trinidad and Tobago is Emmanuel Russell, so he is a very skillful player. He's a Southern Oilers number 17, as you can see him, and Shane Hospital is again showing some camaraderie there. And as they await the ball, and here is Brooks going to take this throw in. Ahing is in support. Brooks decides to go long into Hospitalis and it's cleared away by the Southern Oilers. And it is a throw in once again for Lukeman Brooks and the Tobago Sharks. Of course, the head coach for the Tobago Sharks, Devon Jostling. Assistant coach Hashi Marcia and the team manager Marlon Brown for the Southern Oilers, head coach Andrew Nuss, assistant coach Aki Latha, team manager Ronaldo Mutilal, and the assistant manager Renata Hamilton. So just going through the technical staff of both teams, of course, it's so important to mention these coaches and assistants and all these people involved because without them, the teams wouldn't be where they are today. As Kadim Mason nicks it off of Chike Yahing and drives forward. But he can't keep it in. The flag goes up on the far side. And it is a throw in here for the Tobago Sharks. That's actually good work from Ahing. Didn't lose out on the ball, but worked hard to get it back for his team. Here is Ahing once again. As I did mention earlier, he is going to be a threat. And ah, Jabari Ahing losing out on the ball there. But Hospitalis was on the cover. Here is Andal. Into Ahing once again, who again fumbles on the ball. A little bit shaky there from Jabari Ahing, but we do expect him to go into the game. He is a quality player. Is the number 19 for the Tobago Sharks. Nearly on. You can see the Tobago Sharks are the more dominant team thus far. And here is Ahing having his first look in here. Oh, and he drives past. Can he get the ball into the box? He's well defended. Josh Dunn Thomas keeps quiet. And it is going to be a goal kick. So in the end, I think it was Kadeem Mason actually who got back and did just enough to put off Ahing, preventing him from getting a ball in the box. Seems to have struggled to get back on the seat, but he is there now. Here's Mason. Ball given out again, given away here by Julian. And it's going to be another throw in here. Well, actually, he did well there, did Julian. It's actually going to be a throw in for the Southern Oilers, and it's going to be Kareem Mason to take it. Of course, Kareem Mason normally does play on the left hand side for the Oilers, but today he is in that right back position. And here is an opportunity here for the Southern Oilers. Yellow strike across the face of goal there. And it was Theo Hossein who had that burst of pace. The Tobago Sharks defense was dormant. As you see it again, it's a nice ball played through. It's good control by Hossein. He just drove it across. And actually, I think he might have been looking for some poaching there from Mark Griffith. I think he did go for goal. But Griffith definitely might have wanted to put a foot in there. But nevertheless, a good opportunity there for the Oilers. Brito. It's played right into the feet here of Emmanuel Russell, a man you don't really want to give the ball away to. Oh, that's a nice looking ball out here to Mark Griffith. Can he find a ball on the inside? He decides to go long and that's lovely over the top for Julian, but it's good cover again on the Sharks. Deal with it and Ahing plays it out wide to GK. Ahing. What can he do here? Sarret just loses out there. The captain. Here's Hussein once again. Turns nicely in the midfield. Oh, trying some skill there, Hussein, and he's pulled back there by Jabari Ahing, who has to be careful there. Hussein is a tricky lad, and he's going to have to keep his eye on the ball there, is Jabari Ahing. 
Or else if he keeps doing that all day, he's gonna eventually end up in the book. Swung over the top, but easily dealt with by Brito once again. Hospital Alice is under it. And gives it into Ahing who keeps possession. Well, as I did mention, the Southern Oilers, of course, do sit second in Group D. Tobago Sharks sit first. And if the Oilers do win this game here, they will tie on points with the Tobago Sharks. Seven all. But the goal difference of the Tobago Sharks is what separates these two teams. Well, if the Oilers, of course, are to win. They do have a goal difference of six. Uh, the Oilers are negative four, so they're going to have to win by 11 goals if they are to top this group here. So, improbable, but not impossible. Anything is possible in this game of football. Of course, the quarterfinals will be starting on the 5th of June, which is next week, Sunday. Gonna be some great football. I think the teams that are going through from the group stages are some real quality. Of course, later on we will be seeing the likes of the Maloney Mavericks. And there's some confusion here because Jabari Ayang is getting water and the Oilers have gone to play and it's a strike and it's in the back of the net. And that was so confusing. I mean, I was talking about something completely different. The Tobago Sharks players are absolutely furious, but Justin Thomas has allowed the goal. And the Southern Oilers don't care. Kevin Graham is way off his line. Justin Thomas pleading his cause, but it seemed as if there was some sort of talking being done on the sideline. And the ball was played through. It's Jaron Francis who got the strike, a deflected past Kevin Graham. And the goal is actually allowed. Devon Jostling is confused, as I think everybody in the Marvin Lee Stadium is right now, because we all thought it was a break, but nevertheless, play continues, and the Oilers lead 1-0 in a very bizarre fashion. They won't be happy with that one, will the Tobago Sharks? They feel that they have been unfairly dealt with here. Well, nevertheless, play goes on. Here is Andal into Jabari Ahing. Into Chike Ahing, plays it over the top. There's a nice looking ball there. Can he strike it in? Could be one all here. No, that's excellent defense there from the Southern Oilers. It is going to be a corner for the Sharks. Which is going to be taken by none other than Shane Hospitalis. He swings it in. Can somebody get on it? Oh, it's a nice header and it's just wide. Rose like a salmon there. He just sliced off his forehead and went wide. But it was again a decent delivery in from Hospitalis. A row. A really good ball inside. And unfortunately for the Sharks, he wasn't able to get one in the back of the net. That's the second time that they have shown their threat on the set piece on the corner. This time from the other side. Regardless of the side of the goal, Shane Hospitalis seems to produce consistent quality. Here is Lukman, who receives the loose ball, but gives it back here. And it's Emmanuel Russell, who shows some of his skill there. We spoke about it earlier, but just couldn't find the right pass there. Into the goal scorer, Francis. Who, of course, is the captain of the Southern Oilers this evening. So a captain's goal there from Francis. Still early here in this one in the first half, so... Even though the Tobago Sharks will be shaken up by that first goal, they do feel, or they would feel, that they do still have a lot of time to get back into this one. Only 14 minutes being played. Here is Ahing, controls nicely and plays it into Hospitalis, but 
Russell is quickly on his toes and Hosein turning nicely again. He's had a nice start to the game. Justin Thomas gets in foot. Yes, and of course the new rules that have been implemented a couple years ago that if the ball does touch the referee, if he intervenes with the play, the play must be stopped. So Justin Thomas just doing his duty. There's going to be a drop ball here for the team who was in possession. Of course, that is the Southern Oilers. And here is Hussein. Oh, they actually give it back. So the Sharks were the ones who were in possession. Sorry, I didn't see that. And that's a nice ball over by Hospitalis, but just wasn't controlled well enough by his teammate there. Ahing wins it off of Mondi. Tries to flick it through. Does... Get back possession there. That's actually good work. And the Sharks trying to respond to that goal that was, or well, they would feel was unfairly given. And Lookman tried to get it, but he played it right off of Jeremy Crookshank. That's good defense from Crookshank. Long throw in by Lookman. Hospitalis flicks it on, but Russell clears it away. It's a throw in here for. The Tobago Sharks. Brooks again goes long this time. Ahing is the one who's the target. He's well marshaled there by Crookshank who skews a ball into a dangerous area. And this could be problems here for the Southern Oilers. But they dealt with it very well. Brito controlling, driving through. Hospitalis has a strike on his left foot, but just didn't get the connection that he would have wanted, and it's easily gobbled up there by Akimo Williams. His first save of the game. Played out there by Andal into Julian. Tries to play it one time, but didn't get the connection that he wanted, and the Tobago Sharks are again on the ball. Here is Andal into his centre-back partner, Brito. Out wide to Brooks. He takes nicely. Forward touch. He's looking into the box. Tries to float one in and just skews it a little bit. But it does find its target. Tobago Sharks have been passing around the ball very nicely. In this first half, as I said, the goal that was conceded was a bit unfortunate. Oh, and that could be problems. And Oh, Josh Dun Thomas pointed the wrong way the first time. But it was a handball by Jimmy Crookshank. Eventually gets it right there. There's Justin Thomas, and it's a free kick in a very dangerous position here. The Tobago Sharks, they're signaling over to Nikolai Nairon, who's the linesman on the near side, and they think he signaled for a penalty. Justin Thomas, again, standing his ground. He's signaled for a free kick. Nikolai Nairon, I'm not sure if he had a different decision, but... The Tobago Sharks boys definitely feel that Crookshank handled the ball inside the box. A lot of deliberation going on still, but I think the final decision is what Justin Thomas signaled for. So it is going to be a free kick here for the Tobago Sharks. And as expected, it is going to be, well, you will at least expect it to be Hospitalis, who's going to take this one, that left foot of his, it's very close, I mean, almost is a penalty, and the kind of quality that he has, this could be bread and butter, but the Southern Oilers wall stands strong, and it looks like Hospitalis is the one lining it up, but there is some problems within the box there, Justin Thomas just going across the deal with DSU. Should get it off here. And it is Hospitalis who chips it over, but just couldn't get it to drop or dip rather in time. And the Southern Oilers lead 1 0 still in the 19th minute here as we see the free kick again. You could see what he tried to do. He just tried to really clip it into that top corner, the chain Hospitalis, but didn't get the dip that he wanted. Uh, no trouble there for Akimo Williams. And 
Let's launch top field. That's a nice ball through there into Ahing. Good skill again from GK Ahing. He's turning in the midfield and he shoots this time. But Oh, and Hakima Williams. Uh, one slipped up on him, Ahing. Got a strike away, but didn't really get a connection that he wanted. He has moved into a more central role here as Chike Ahing, as opposed to his usual starting position out on the left-hand side for the Tobago Sharks. So it'll be interesting to see how he does perform in his role. He is a creative player, but we do know that he likes the space to run in behind. So it may not be a lot of license. And that's a nice ball over the top by Ahing Jabari this time. But Nikolai Nairon quickly raises his flag and it is offside but that was a decent ball over the top from Jabari Ahing just didn't time his run well enough as you see it again dinked over the Southern Oilers keeping their defensive line disciplined enough to prevent any danger Kimo Williams with a very unconvincing clearance Ahing sees him off his line and didn't get the height there the Chike Ahing it was a good idea Kimo Williams playing with fire there. That one is cleared away. Here is Mark Griffith. Drops it off to Emmanuel Russell who drives it through. That's an ice ball there. Into Griffith. And takes a touch. But Brito was well positioned. And that's good defense. And a nice clearance too. By Kevin Graham. Kevin Graham. Here is Emmanuel Russell. The Oilers trying to add to their 1-0 lead and play breaks down once again. Here is Hippolyte. Russell does work very hard in midfield. He does intercept the ball a lot and that's beautifully played out wide there by Hospitalis. He has a lot of technique or techers as they say. Problems here for the Oilers. Here's Chike Aing. He's in on goal on that left foot of his but the touch let him down. It was promising from the Tobago Sharks but in the end they just couldn't Get a shot away or get a ball in that final, or get that final pass rather. And they have created, have the Tobago Sharks. have had a lot of chances on goal thus far, but they just haven't been able to get it the back of the net. Luck really hasn't been on their side, the goal that was conceded. It was a bit unlucky to be completely fair to the Sharks. They have been the better team, but the result doesn't favor them at all, and that's well won back by the Sharks once again. Russell, that's a nicely played ball out here to Griffith, and Russell receives it again, and he plays it nicely over the top again. Here is Mark Griffith charging down the left wing for the Oilers. Can he find a ball in the box? Plays it there nicely. Russell continues his run. And Andal had to be wary. Did well in the end there, did Jabari Andal, but Emmanuel Russell is definitely on it today. He started that whole play with Griffith it was a nicely played through ball by Griffith again but just too much on it but again it's really good play there from Emmanuel Russell and it is a corner for the Southern Oilers which is going to be taken here by Mark Griffith he plays it short into Russell again who tries to play it first time but it's easily intercepted by Brito. Cleared away, but possession one back. And GK Ahing working hard to win it back. Here's Hippolyte on the ball. Plays it through to Ahing. He has limited options here. He's going to have to go alone. And he does excellently. Plays it a nice ball to Hospitalis. Can they conjure up something here? The Tobago Sharks. Hospitalis plays it in nicely. And the play breaks down. Oh, but the clearances ricochet. And they get away with it. Or do they? Hippolyte, the danger still here for the Oilers. GK Ahing. Oh, I think they passed it around a little too much there to the Sharks, but they still have possession, and this time, surely, possession will be back over in the hands or the feet you know, of the Southern Oilers. I think they overplayed it a little bit there, did the Tobago Sharks. Maybe tried to be a little too cute, and in the end, just couldn't produce anything, really. But you do sense that a goal could be coming here for the Tobago Sharks if they do continue like this. It is very likely that they will end up with the ball in the back of the net. As the ball is launched forward there by Akimo Williams. Mark Griffith flicks it on again, but possession right back with the Sharks. Here's Hippolyte, who's quickly closed down by Griffith. 
And Krukshank again with the defensive work. Ahing comes across. Hippolyte. Plays it back into Ahing. Jabari Ahing may not always get in on the goals or the assists, but definitely is a great, a smart midfielder is Jabari Ahing. If you really look at his play, he's always in support of the ball. He's always shading his other midfield partner as well when the ball shifts across. His movement is absolutely brilliant as Jabari Ahing. So you can definitely see that he's a player who understands the game, has been well coached throughout his career. If you do keep an eye on him and the way that he does play his football, it, it's absolutely brilliant. That's a loose touch by Griffith, but he gets away with it. Russell, again in the midst of everything. Kadeem Mason. Oh, I caught on the ball there was Mondi and Ahing was looking. It was actually a bit slow to react to that one there was Shike Ahing. Thought that would have been a little more dangerous. Here is Shane Hospitalis once again. Oh, he beats one, he beats two, and eventually loses out. I think, I think he was closed down at four. A light green jersey surrounding him. Julian. Couldn't get it under his spell there, but the ball goes out and it is a throw in here for the Southern Oilers. Still 1 0 here as we approach the 26th minute in the first half. In this Group League clash between the Tobago Sharks and the Southern Oilers. Of course, the Tobago Sharks on top of Group D with seven points. The Southern Oilers second with four. Both of these teams have already qualified for the quarterfinals. This is the final game of the group. Northern Cobras, the third team in this group, of course, uh, played all their matches and they were only able to put together two points, so they unfortunately weren't able to qualify as Hospitalis plays it through here. Problems here for the Oilers and a lovely tackle there for a Mondi. That was excellent and the clearance is a bit comical. It's back into the feet of Hospitalis. Here is Hosein. What can he do here? He really is a bright spark here. It's Theo Hosein and he finds his teammate. Ball played over the top very early by Manuel Russell who wanted some movement off the ball there from his teammates. Didn't get it, was a bit disappointed. But he works hard and he gets it back again here. Does Russell. He really is having a good first half. Here is he's driving at the Sharks defense and that. Oh, it's taken cleanly. Russell driving. But there was no nonsense defending from the Sharks. And Hospitalis tries to squeeze it through, but Mason read it. Mason tried to replicate Hospitalis' pass, and the interception itself was replicated as well. Here is Hospitalis, plays it into Chike Ahing, who is in the central role. He plays a lovely ball over to Hippolyte, who drives it across one time, and that's lovely. That is absolutely brilliant from the Tobago Sharks. And you knew it was coming. They were on the front foot despite going down early. And that's beautiful football and a beautiful goal. And Chike Ahing in that central role, dropping deep. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And the Tobago Sharks square it up. It's one all. Roshan Thomas writing something in his book. I'm not sure if a player got booked. Uh, I was completely distracted by the goal, but we see it again here. Ahing with a lovely ball over the top. Hippolyte swings it across, and it was bread and butter, and a beautiful goal. And the Tobago Sharks level it up. The Oilers trying to respond quickly, but they weren't able to receive the ball there out on the left wing. I think it was Mark Griffith was the target of that one. Kevin Graham. Brito. Again, the Sharks just showing the maturity. They really are a great team, uh, the Tobago Sharks. 
Chike Ahing turn, but turned into danger. And again, it's a lovely ball played through. Here's Hippolyte again trying to replicate it. Oh, and oh, and what a save! Akimo Williams with a lovely reaction. It was almost a carbon copy of the first play that led to the goal. And the Oilers get away with that one. Some lovely goalkeeping. Brito again with a lovely ball teasing. Just couldn't get the connection he wanted, and it actually came right off of Barry Lovell. And Akimo Williams had to deal with it accordingly. And deal with it accordingly, he did. And it is another... There's another corner here for the Sharks. Hospitalis swings it in again. Ball is still in play. Lukeman Brooks trying to keep it in, but just sliced it. Wide or behind. Yeah, and it seems as if the Southern Oilers are going to make a substitution here. It looks like it's going to be the number 11, Kaleem Prince, who's coming on here. And it is Julian who makes way out on that right hand side. And it was Kwasi Williams who did score the goal for the Tobago Sharks. Lovely, and he did have an opportunity there once again, but he couldn't finish it off. Here is Lukeman Brooks. Into Chike Yahing, tries to play it first time, but it's well read by Crookshank. Griffith took too long on it, and it was poked away. Here is Andal. He turns, he's under. Pressure there from Francis, the goal scorer for the Southern Oilers. Well, they deal with it in the end, do the Tobago Sharks. And here is Jabari Ahing again in well position. Here is Ahing once again. Dinks it over the top for Hippolyte, but Crookshank is there once again. Has been good this first half as Jimmy Crookshank, despite the goal coming from his side. He has had some decent interceptions. Ahing is absolutely working hard on top there. Winning back the ball nicely. And here is Hippolyte. Into hospitalized who plays at one time. That's a lovely ball over there to Williams. What can they do here? The Tobago Sharks just too much on it. Don't think he kept it in there, did Williams. Here is Mark Griffith. Oh, some nice skill from him, but he's still under pressure. Russell drops it off nicely. That's beautiful play there from Emmanuel Russell. And he plays a lovely ball in the middle. Here's Francis once again, looking for his second. The captain, he cuts onto the right foot, and he plays it nicely. Can he finish it here? And no, oh, it was the substitute, actually, who got in on goal, Kaleem Prince, but he just hesitated and allowed the Sharks to regroup. And allowed Kevin Graham to make an easy save in the end. But here is Prince once again into Hussein. Oh, that was a golden opportunity from the Oilers. It was initially lovely play from Russell and Griffith, who have been putting together some nice passes on the left hand side here for the Oilers. And a beautifully played ball through from Emmanuel Russell again. But just couldn't get it in the back of the net, could the Oilers? That's nice control again there from Williams. But they got in their way. On each other's way there, did Williams and Ahing. It's nice again from Chike Ahing. He really is having a good first half, and that's a lovely ball once again into Hippolyte. We know his crossing ability. Can he find another dangerous ball on the inside? He can. Hospitalis goes on to his left foot, has a strike. Oh! Clean as a whistle. What a goal once again. Another assist from Hippolyte. And a beautiful goal. And it's 2-1 to the Tobago Sharks. And again, the Chike Ahing and Hippolyte connection leads to yet another masterpiece from the Tobago Sharks. 
wow that was beautiful that is really nice football there from the sharks you can see here politic and this time he decides to hold up the play lovely turn absolutely eliminates kadeem mason and shane hospitalis shooting practice Kimo williams was beaten that's beautiful play from the sharks and the oilers just like that now sit behind after that early goal from francis you do feel that if something is to come from the oilers it's gonna be through emmanuel russell theo hosein they have a lot of quality here as our hing skews that one out wide and here is Kaleem prince what can he do here for his team he's driving forward nice pace from him uh, just overran it there did prince and here is our hing once again who really has been brilliant this first half Two lovely balls over to Hippolyte. That seems to be something they practice. Russell wins it nicely. This could be problems here for the Sharks. He is going to drive. He has the pace, but still keeps the ball. This is nice from Russell. Good patient play. Andal does very well. And Russell uh, really wasn't given an inch there. Andal with some excellent defense. Here is Hospitalis, the scorer of that beauty we just witnessed. Launched over the top again. This time, Crookshank does deal with it. Hippolyt himself. He's having a great time out there on that right flank. Two assists for him. And the Sharks really have turned it on. I mean, from the get-go, they were the better team. They just unfortunately conceded. Unfortunately for them, at least, conceded a goal. And now, you would say that the score line does reflect the football that has been played. Ball again, out right there. Oh, it's over the top! Oh, it's off the post! And it was Ahing again who got the dink ball across. And I think it was actually Hippolyte this time who was on the end of the cross rather than the provider. But they just couldn't squeeze it in. You see it again. Ahing usually in that left side position. Wonderful teasing ball. And it was Hippolyte, but just couldn't get the telling touch. And the Oilers get away with yet another one. As that ball is flicked on by Francis, the captain who tries to launch his team forward. Here is Jabari Ahing, who has a strike and did connect cleanly, but nothing there to really have a trouble. Akimo Williams. Ball cleared upfield again by Brito. Here is Crookshank, who gives it into his teammate, but is fouled in the midfield there and possession over to the Southern Oilers. And Crookshank will be the one to take this as well. Theo Crawford are warming up on the sideline there for the Oilers. I don't expect them to make that substitution anytime soon. It is in their first half, so maybe an option for the Southern Oilers in this second half. He is a creative spark as Theo Crawford can definitely add goals and assist, create chances, so which is what they need here, do the Oilers. And Lukman Brooks did well, was running at Krukshank who committed the foul. Brooks just taking his time to get back on his feet again. Camaraderie shown. Jocelyn Thomas is going to book Crookshank though for that tackle there on Lukman Brooks. First player booked, I believe, in the first half. There was one earlier, but I'll have to 
recheck with you and I do get intel on who was booked, if at all. But definitely there, Crookshank. Does go into the book. And it is another free kick here for the Tobago Sharks. And another opportunity for them to get the ball into the box. We did see them. They do have an aerial threat. They do have some tall players in their lineup there. And it is going to be Lukeman Brooks who takes it. They decide not to swing it in. It's played short. Brito has space. Will he find a shot? No, he plays it into Hospitalis. But play breaks down for the Sharks. Ahing is hurried there by Francis who does extremely well. And in the end, it's good work there from John. Theo Hosein winning it back in the midfield. But Hospitalis come. Who's and calm as ever. Here is Ahing. That's a nice touch into the midfield. Hospitalis with a nice one as well. But the second one couldn't get into his feet. And Mon declares. Here is Andal. Driving forward from that centre back position. It finds its way to Chike Ahing who dances. Oh, and he's still on the ball. Here is Ahing. Really is a great player to watch. He plays it through. Oh, this is nice play, but I think he overran it. Kept it in well, though, did Serrat. Gets it through, Hospitalis! And it's in the same corner. And it's 3-1. Oh, that's lovely once again from the Tobago Sharks. Chike Ahing again in the mix. And Shane Hospitalis scores his second of the game. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the Southern Oilers really... Have seen the game swing in two twos. Lovely play. I thought it ran out, but he found his teammate well. And Hospitalis slotted it home beautifully. Akimo Williams didn't even make a move. He knew the quality of that one. And the Sharks lead 3 1. And substitution has been made here for the Oilers. Theo Crawford has come on. And I actually think that it's Mark Griffith who's made way for him. To be fair to the lad, Griffith did have a, a, a decent first half. Here's Crawford's first bit of action. Turns in nicely, trying to show some of his skill, but he gives it away and it comes off of him. And it is a throw in, of course, to your Crawford, the Trinity Mocha man. Lukeman Brooks, here's Hospitalis, who is on a hat trick. No, oh, and that's lovely. He really is a te techie player, as they say. Here's Shane Hospitalis, has a lot of techers. That left foot of his is. Something special, and he's looking for a hat trick here. A nice ball over the top again, but I think this time Akimo Williams did really well. And my mistake, but actually, I didn't think it was Kwasi Williams who provided the assist for Hospitalis on that goal there. Soret, of course, did leave the pitch. Hence the change in that front three for the Tobago Sharks, and Ahing trying to find Chike. But it was well intercepted again by the Southern Oilers. Here is Jabari Ahing once again. Hospitalis with a nice dummy. Beautiful turn. Williams is in again for a second of the game. Lovely save, Williams. Excellent, but danger still there. Here's Chike Ahing. Oh, it takes it down well. Josh and Thomas. All eyes on you, but the ball still plays. And Kadeem Mason does the defensive duties, but a lovely dummy there from Shane Hospitalis. Look at it again. He was in on goal there with Kwasi Williams. Had a beautiful save. Stuck out the right leg there. Did Akimo Williams and prevents his team from going down by one more. The Tobago Sharks are playing some lovely football here. That front three. And of course, Shane Hospital is right in behind. They are so great. And another opportunity here. Here's Hospital is once again. Can he get a strike away? Takes it over the top. Decent effort. Williams easily gobbles it up. Launches it over the top. Here's Francis. John did well there, and Andal, likewise. Or rather not, he gives the ball away. Can the Oilers do something here? Here's Prince, dinks it over. Nice ball there, Griffith still is on the pitch. And he's swinging it in here, can he find the ball on the inside? It's just behind Francis. Lovely play again from the Oilers. But good defense once again from the Sharks. And Josh and Thomas just checking to see if Francis was okay, which he was. Here's Brooks. 
gives it away cheaply there. What can they do here? Emmanuel Russell is driving as he does so well. Brooks right on his toes and did well there, did Lukeman Brooks. Didn't give Emmanuel Russell the space that he wanted. But it is a free kick actually, Thomas. Signal a free kick so that seemed to have been some sort of infringement. I think Brooks was actually holding on to the jersey now seeing the, the replay of Emmanuel Russell. And it is Theo Crawford who is going to be the one to swing it in here for the Oilers. And he went for goal there, but I was a bit disappointed from Crawford. We know that he has a lot more quality than that. That's the number 10 for the Southern Oilers. Just tried to go for the near post, but didn't connect cleanly. And there will be one minute added on at the end of this first half. An exciting first half, it must be said. A bizarre goal from the Oilers and three beauties from the Sharks. And they're looking for a fourth before time calls. It swung over the top. Hippolyte! Oh, man. Boy, does he deserve a goal. He has had a brilliant first half. Has Hippolyte. And that should be the last bit of meaningful action here in this first half. As Akimo Williams goes over to retrieve the ball. A lovely ball played across. Hippolyte We're trying to dive in. Had a Robin Van Persie-esque. Was there and... Just to confirm for you that the substitution that was made for Theo Crawford was Isaiah Ford who came off. So Mark Griffith stays on the pitch. He is out on that right-hand side. Probably in the midfield, rather, is the number nine for the Southern Oilers. Uh, Kimo Williams launches it up. Justin Thomas does blow his whistle. And that is the end of the first half. Four goals. Four exciting goals, it should be said. Uh, Francis opening the scoring in the 11th minute through bizarre means. Shane Hospitalis with a brace, two similar goals. And Williams, of course, with a sitter, which he couldn't miss at all. The Tobago Sharks really have been dominant in this first half. The Southern Oilers have had some bright sparks. Theo Hosein, Emmanuel Russell as well getting in on the action. But it has been all Tobago Sharks in this first half. So we will be back in 15 minutes. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with the second half. Are you ready for the biggest youth football tournament in Trinidad and Tobago? Over 200 teams, 2,600 male and female players, 6 weekends, more than 100 games, 1 cup and endless opportunities. Republic Cup Youth Football Tournament 2022. Kickstart your dreams. Tournament starts June 4th. To register, visit www.gatewayathletics.com. Looking for great quality clothing and prices to suit your budget? Then head on down to OCA Fashion and Gift Boutique, located at 94 Eastern Main Road in St. Augustine. We offer clothing and accessories for everything from brunch, clubbing, showers and so much more 
we are the sole distributors for Savage Black Hair Shampoo Dye, your five minute hair color solution. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram or call us at 473 or OCA or 489 Soka. OCA Fashion and Cape Boutique for unbelievable finds. Are you ready for the biggest youth football tournament in Trinidad and Tobago? Over 200 teams, 2,600 male and female players, six weekends, more than 100 games, one cup, and endless opportunities. Republic Cup Youth Football Tournament 2022. Kickstart your dreams. Tournament starts June 4. To register, visit www.gatewayathletics.com. So we're here at the Squadron Grounds in Aruka on College Road, where we had the launch of our football academy. We are taking in players from as early as three years old, so we have U5 all the way up to U23. We have decided to launch our football academy because we have seen the need to bridge the gap both on and off the field for our local players with the intentions of going abroad on a football scholarship. Yeah, this morning is, is another um, checkbox to cross off as we launch our academy. This academy is a, is a major part of our development program. Um, as we won't have to do the in-depth assessment of getting players into our elite and development programs. This is important for Trinidad and Tobago as we know the, the pandemic has really destroyed us. And to be fair, we, we must thank the parents and, and, and the children for having that belief in us um, with our development and elite programs. So launching the academy is a massive part for us as we will have the kids that will be moving up into elite and development. We have a lot of plans. Um, as you know, we, we recently um, finished our Trinidad and Tobago showcase. Now we are looking to get into other islands to, to do the same. Um, we, are, we will be releasing our dates. Um, we also have later on this year, we have NCE. We have um, in, in Pennsylvania, um, that's in July. We have a USA tour. So it's, it's a lot of things happening here at Gateway Athletics. So it's all about giving these children who, who has faith in us um, the opportunity to, to really and truly live their dream and, and be seen. So I must, I must commend um, the, the idea that is behind it and the, and the team that we have that, that keeps bringing in great ideas. And, and, and to be fair, we, we, we have executed it well so far and, and we just have to stick with it and, and trust the process. So you can register for our academy it's open to boys and girls. Registration forms are available on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Hi guys, I am Coach Denicia. I'm better known as Auntie Denicia. I work with the Under 5 team. This is the only football camp that you will get where you see we integrate fun, learning football. Bring you guys, bring all the children down. Let's have fun and let's enjoy ourselves with them. They always enjoy themselves. Good day everybody. My name is Kevin Williams, Coach Vin. I am with Gateway Athletics, the academy. I'm with the young ones. Um, we are really having an exciting time. We're really enjoying it. Um, the, the focus of our sessions are really to make sure that the kids have fun, they enjoy it, and they also learn a little bit of football, right? So um, today we did some beautiful games. We did a nice little uh, musical ball. It's basically musical chairs with the ball where they have to come in and get a ball. We also did um, red light, green light. A lot of the kids are familiar with that. Um, and they had a lot of fun. At the end, they did some passing and also some shooting. So this is what we are looking to do. Make sure they have fun, play some games, and also incorporate football. So, yeah, you all can see the children. I really enjoy it, trust me. I enjoy these kids, and they look like it. it clearly, they're enjoying my, my um, company also. So, yeah, Gateway Athletics Academy. Blessings. What? 
water, water. Introducing. Come and get it. Wait. <coughs> come and get it. Come and get it. Come and get it. Ah, much better. Customer service excellence. Reliability. Home delivery across TNT. Place your orders. 7 7 water. Join our rust. 7 7 water. Make life easier. 7 7 water. What you waiting for? 7 7 water. Our delivery trucks are in your area. Call now. Come and get it. 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 Looking for great quality clothing and prices to suit your budget? Then head on down to OCA Fashion and Gift Boutique, located at 94 Eastern Main Road in St. Augustine. We offer clothing and accessories for everything from brunch, clubbing, showers, and so much more. We are the sole distributors for Savage Black Hair Shampoo Dye, your five minute hair color solution. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram or call us at 473 for OCA or 489 Soka. OCA Fashion and Gift Boutique for unbelievable finds. back here for the second half of this game in the Marvin Lee Stadium of course the GA Super Cup it is the Tobago Sharks against the Southern Oilers the Tobago Sharks leading 3-1 after going down early to Aljama Al Francis Jaron Francis goal Shane Hospitalis with a brace two beautiful left footed strikes into the bottom corner and of course Kwasi Williams who did start off the scoring for the Sharks It is going to be the Southern Oilers who are attacking from left to right now in the bright green. And we do expect to see more excitement in this second half. The first half produced definitely. Of course, that is the first game of tonight's doubleheader. Second game will be the Maloney Mavericks against the Port of Spain Capitals. Just to remind you once again of the standings in this Group D clash between the Sharks and the Southern Oilers. Of course, the Sharks are on top of Group D with seven points. The Southern Oilers do sit second with four. And if things do stay this way, the Tobago Sharks will move on to ten and solidify their spot on top of Group D. Of course, both these teams already qualified for the quarterfinals. So... They are both going to be advancing and will be in action in the further stages of the tournament. And there is going to be a substitution here for the Oilers. And it is Matthias Mutilal who is coming on to number 13. And Shum Mondi coming off. Shamar Mondi who has made way for Mutilal. So as we await the whistle from Justin Thomas, Mark Griffith with his jersey and his pants, he's ready for the second half action. And Thomas obliges and 
It is the Oilers who get us on the way. Russell immediately trying to get Theo Crawford on the ball, but here is Ahing. Jabari, of course. Hospital is two beautiful goals in the first half, similar in nature. One a little closer than the other, but they both produce the same result. And again, there he is. Nice play again. Good strength from Jabari Ahing in the midfield. Holds on to the ball well. And it's a nice start to the first half here for the Sharks. Just showing that they are still moving on the momentum from the first. And this man on the ball here, Chike Ahing, has been absolutely brilliant. And he's fouled. Or oh, maybe he wasn't actually. Justin Thomas seemed to want to blow his whistle, but in the end he didn't. And the ball is actually back again with Ahing, who seems to have moved back into this left wing position. Williams, who also did get on the score sheet in the first half, has gone back into that more central rule. Crawford launches it up, but it's easily taken down by Andal and Brito clears further. Here's Mutila with his first touch of the... Oh, it's a nice ball, actually. Crawford read it. And so did Andal. Brito out to Ahing. What can he produce here? Chike Ahing. There's a nice ball there into Williams, who turns infield and plays a lovely ball out wide. And here's Hippolyte, who himself has had a brilliant first half. And... Emmanuel Russell back doing the defensive duties actually. Oh, and that's an effort from Jabari Ahing way out. But Emmanuel Russell seems to have moved out into that left back position for the Southern Oilers. Of course, he was in the midfield in the first half. But it is now Krukshank who moves into the centre back position due to the introduction of Mutilal and the departure of. Mondi, who of course is a centre back by nature. So it is Crookshank and Lovell who occupy those two centre back positions. And Kadeem Mason keeps his right back position, which he did have in the first half. And it is a throw in here for the Southern Oilers. Just to let you know. That Gateway Athletics, of course, who has been who integral in this Super Cup, of course, the Gateway Athletics Super Cup, which it is named in this tournament, has been brilliant. The impact of Gateway Athletics on these teams and the players that they have been able to showcase here, it's been absolutely brilliant so far. We have seen so much talent in General Tobago. We have so many footballers who really have been given a great opportunity and speaking of which two players from this tournament the GA Super Cup have been actually chosen for national team duty to play against St. Lucia and Joshua Alexander of the Maloney Mavericks and Akeem Roach of the Tobago Sharks have been called up for national duty so all the best to those lads as they go and fly the flag high and here is Chike Ahing on the ball. John. Hospitalis with a nice ball again. He has been brilliant as Shane Hospitalis. And he is on a hat trick. And he's back on the ball once again. But it's well read this time by Crookshank. But Hospitalis on the left for tries to slip it through. And well read by Lovell. Provida, uh, he cleaning him up, and Williams catching it. But even after that first half of dominance by the Sharks, you do still feel that the Southern Oilers do have quality on the field. It only takes a moment to score a goal, and if they can get two of those moments, they may be able to get back into this one. And it is a goal, a corner kick actually here for the Sharks. So early pressure for the Oilers. To be taken by none other than Shane Hospitalis. He is a traditional center attacking mid. He is Shane Hospitalis. He is so creative. Does take all the set pieces for his team, so at least 99% of them. Once in advanced positions. 
And he reels, he swings it in near post. Oh, and that was a decent ball, but it was cleared away. I think it was Crookshank in the end who got the clearance important because Hippolyte was lurking. And Hospitalis has another bite at the cherry. Swings it in once again this time, Williams. Oh, it's a bit unconvincing, but in the end he's able to gather. And he tries to release Mark Griffith, who's in an advanced position. Oh, that's lovely play from Griffith. He gets away from his man. Crawfordo is in support. Griffith still charging here at the Tobago. Sharks tries to get it across, but it's well defended. And it's Jabari Ahing once again. And I did mention Jabari Ahing. He's a brilliant player, not only going forward, not only in the midfield, but showing some of his defensive qualities. Look at that recovery run from Ahing. Came away from in the midfield, got across, and did the work. But it's a corner for the Southern Oilers. And it is going to be swung in. It's driven. Crawford will try to get a touch. But it's cleared away. Shank is beaten by the ball, but Lovell covered well. And it is actually a foul there by Williams. And here is Kadeem Mason. Who plays a, it's a nice ball there into Griffith, who controls well, but drops it off right into the path of the Tobago Sharks. And he's working hard here as Griffith and does well. Crawford, what can he conjure up here? And taken away from him, Mutilal intercepts it. Ahing plays it out wide to Ahing, who gets a bit fortunate there, but I think Jocelyn Thomas saw a handball and Mason gives it right back into the Sharks. Here's Chike Ahing into Jabari. Launches one across, but easily dealt with by Russell, who actually played a nice ball there into Francis, who is the Southern Oilers captain and goal scorer. Hosein plays it through, but it's well read. Here's Hosein once again. Mutilal plays it out wide to Theo Crawford. Can he find a ball inside the box? He actually has a strike! Oh, and <laughs> it was deflected. It seemed to have been going into that top corner, but in the end it was... Uh, I think the deflection really took the sting off of the strike from Theo Crawford. Russell under some pressure here, but uses his body well, but loses out in the end to Hippolyte. Ahing. No, it's Williams actually in the midfield there battling nicely. Now is Ahing on the ball. Cuts inside on his first touch. Has a strike on the right foot. Uh, Kimo Williams made the save, didn't make the catch. And eventually gets it into his hands. And he skews it. Gives possession right back over to the Tobago Sharks. But the Republic Cup, of course, coming up as well. The Republic Bank in partnership with Gateway Athletics. Uh, E-Zone of that will be starting on the 4th of June right here in Mokoya, not in the Marvin Lee Stadium, but in Constantine Park, of course, the 7v7 Youth Football Republic Bank Tournament. Boys under 14, under 16, and under 17 to 19 are the age groups, and the girls, of course, with the under 15 and the under 18 age groups. So something else to look forward to more football of course this time with the younger ones of course the grassroots so important as well in the sports of football and gateway athletics uh, doing the work alongside republic bank to develop the sport here in trinidad and tobago and make the players sustainable for the nation and it is lovell who holds up the ball nicely Of course, if you do want more information, oh, and Kadeem Mason held on to the jersey of Chike Ahing. Interesting to see if Justin Thomas reaches for his pocket. It looked like it should have been a yellow card offense for me. He absolutely grabbed onto the jersey of Ahing. <laughs> Ahing comically went down, but we'll accept it anyway. Russell clears it into the night sky. Lukman, Brooks controls well. But if you do want more information on the Republic Cup, you can check out Gateway Athletics, where you can also register, www.gatewayathletics.com. And if you want more information as well, you can contact Gateway Athletics at 496-GATE. That is 496-G-A-T-E. If you need any further information. And just to give you a little more, the E-Zone, of course, as I mentioned, We'll start off on the 4th of June in 
Constantine Park in Makoya. The North Zone will start on the 11th of June in Nelson Mandela Park, of course, in Port of Spain. Tobago will take place in the Dwight York Stadium on the 18th of June and the 19th. The Central and South in Manny Ramjohn Stadium on the 26th and 27th of June. And the finals, which will be held on the 3rd of July in the Atto Bolden Stadium in Coover. As Aheng is once again fouled by Kadeem Mason. Aheng really has been brilliant this game. Dropping deep, finding those passes over the top to Hippolyte. Which contributed to goals for the Sharks. And it seems as in the, if in the second half, he's still proving to be a problem for Kadeem Mason. Here is Aheng once again, but this time Mason gets the better of him. And it's cleared up field by Mutilal. Oh, and it's missed by Kadeem Mason. I'm not sure if he got a nick on it. Yeah, he probably did because it's a throw in here for the Sharks. And it is still 3-1 here in this Group D clash between the Sharks and the Oilers. Uh, top of the table clash really, but both teams have already advanced to the quarterfinals as Griffith chases down a long ball. And uh, with some very experienced play there, just heading it back into the hands of Kevin Graham. Brito into Aheng. Lays it up nicely. Lovely play again from the Sharks. Here is Chike Aheng. Keeps it in well. Uses his body well. That's beautiful. Beautiful hold up play from Aheng. Williams tries to spray it wide but doesn't get a connection. Second bite of the cherry. Executed perfectly. Hippolyte to the lovely touch. The Sharks are turning on the style here. But lingered a little too long on it there. Did Hippolyte but he wins it back. But Crawford at this time is there. To pick up the pieces and he beats his man and Hippolyte does excellently well to prevent any sort of danger and coaches do like to see the flair the fans of course love to see the flair Hippolyte there just showing some of the skill that he possesses of course no pressure on him really leading 3-1 and your team is clear on top of the table why not show some of the skills that you possess don't blame him at all there here is Andal. Nice turn in the midfield there. Jabari Ahing again settling the play as he does ever so well. Well read by Emmanuel Russell, who is fouled by Hippolyte. Of course, man taking a free kick here, Theo Ho sign did have a Good effort in the, in the first half to get the ball in the back of the net. Just dragged it wide. And he's battling there as Williams. Great strength shown by the number 11. Ahing trying to flick it behind. Here is John driving from that left back position. Does well to keep possession. Ahing turns beautifully once again. And plays it into Hospitalis. It's a beautiful play from the Sharks. But it's given away cheaply in the end. Crook Shank shanks that clearance. But... Francis read it early. Here is Emmanuel Russell. And Mark Griffith is flagged offside there by Nikolai Nyron as we are into the 60th minute here of the second half. Russell again with some good defensive work. Has had a good game as Emmanuel Russell. He gets it through nicely there. Opportunity here for the Oilers, but just over, over push there, did Francis. And it is a corner though. So good work from Jaron Francis to get something out of that one. And uh, opportunity here for the Oilers. Out of your picture, Jamie Crookshank is on the ground. Probably, probably a little issue with cramp more than anything else. The physios are being called into action here though. 
as the players are readying up for this corner they will get a little breather before the set piece is taken instructions being given to Kadeem Mason we do hope that everything is okay with Crookshank it does seem to be just a case of cramp as he is being stretched out there by the physios and of course on this fine Sunday evening the night before the holiday the GA Super Cup double header this is the first game of it the second one will be the Maloney Mavericks against the Port of Spain Capitals of course the Maloney Mavericks are unbeaten and to have players who have been called up to the national team to face St. Lucia the senior team Joshua Alexander who has been called up to represent Trinidad and Tobago as well as Roach from the Tobago Sharks who was also called up to that national team And see the players in the back there warming up for that second game. I believe that and those are the Maloney Mavericks who have been absolutely brilliant throughout the tournament. Joshua Alexander, you can understand why he was called up. He is up on the goal scoring charts, along with none other than Nathan Lewis, who has been superb throughout this tournament. Ryan Jordan, also brilliant. Jeremiah Vidal who came into the team and has looked like an absolute Arturo Vidal, really. So a lot of quality in that Maloney Maverick side, and it swung in here, and easily gobbled up there by Graham, who launches it upfield. Hippolyte battling in the midfield. Uh, number three on number three, and Lovell was the successful number three there. That's a nice skill out on the left wing from Crawford, but it wasn't successful in the end. And Brito can look to clear, which he does nicely into Hippolyte, who tries to chest it into Shane Hospitalis. But Crawford was having none of it. 10 on 10 now. Here's Crookshank. Over the top, but Andel should come across to deal with the danger and does. And Brito again with the clearance. And that one beats Emmanuel Russell. It's headed up. And it is a foul, and it's a free kick to the Sharks. It was Lovell who was the offender. <laughs> An offender in a defensive position. Played out wide there by Hospitalis. Hippolyte plays it across early. It's missed by the whole Oilers defense. And here's Ahing, but recovered well there, did. Kadeem Mason had to, because GK Ahing was in on goal. Just a little bit of confusion in the corner there. I think that's the Port of Spain Capitals who are warming up on the side and maybe the ball got mixed up or something like that. Not sure, but the throw-in should be taken and is. And this time Crookshank deal with it. Deals with it, but puts it behind for a corner. And another opportunity here for the Sharks. Still 3-1, there is. Gonna be a there is gonna be a substitution. Nikolai Nairon signaling Justin Thomas has now seen the raised flag. And it looks as if it's going to be Sabero who is coming on. Jamel, who is a very attacking-minded right back. Miss Jamel, the number 12. So it will be interesting to see the positional change because it seems as if it's going to be Shane Hospitalis who's going to come off has put in a shift today has Hospitalis some beautiful passing and of course rewarded with two goals as well as and the ball is whipped in oh and it's cleared away Ahing gets it back again so Sebro eventually drops into that deep position here is Mason deflected right into the path of the Sharks once again and here is John into Hippolyte so you can't see the changes there Hippolyte has come out into this left hand side Jamel immediately going over to that right hand side he is very good on that right hand side he does have a burst of pace and he is able to produce quality with that final ball across the box here's Hippolyte plays it through Williams is in on goal here but he's well marshaled by Lovell oh he's dancing here's Williams 
What can he produce? Still has a ball, but Crookshank did well in the end. And that one beats John. And here's Griffith. Launches it forward, but a little too much on that one there for Francis. And Kevin Graham does his job very well. And El Cantoon. Plays it out wide here to Lukeman Brooks. And of course, because Brooks is in the team playing that right back, it does give Jamel the license to be on that right wing position, that attacking position which he likes to occupy. Turn forward, here's Ahing once again. Will he drive this time? He does. Mutilal gets away from him. He gets away from Mutilal easily. He's inside here. He's ahing. And he's bouncing off players. Strikes it across. Oh, and it's a fourth. Beautiful again. And it's Williams who's on the end of it. Ahing the creator once again. And just like that, it's 4-1 to the Tobago Sharks. Chike Ahing just bouncing off of the Southern Oilers defense. And then bouncing it right into the path of Quasi Williams. And that's his second of the game. And the Sharks lead 4-1. And look at him again here. Ahing gets an easy look at him. He pounces off Lovell there. Puts it on our plate for Williams. And when the ball is on the plate for Williams, he normally scores. And just like that, it is 4-1 to the Tobago Sharks. And you do feel that the Southern Oilers may be out of this one. They really haven't gotten into the second half as much as they may have expected to and the Sharks have extended their lead to 4-1 a three goal lead once again and you really do feel that the game is in the hands of the Tobago Sharks now as we approach the 67th minute here in the Marvin Lee Stadium for this GA Super Cup clash in Group D between Tobago Sharks and the Southern Oilers the Oilers who sit second and the Sharks who Said first on seven points, the Oilers, of course, on four. Northeastern Cobras, the third team in this group, with two points. They were unable to qualify for the quarterfinals, allowing these two teams to be the ones to advance from Group D. And here's Chike Ahing, who has been brilliant today, I think. Maybe in for a shout for man of the match. I mean, his stats haven't been there. He only able to register one assist thus far, but. He really has been the creative spark. His plays have led to the goals. So, interesting to see, of course, Kwasi Williams scoring too, as well as Shane Hospitalis. So, they would be the ones leading the race for the MVP award for this game. But nevertheless, Ahing has been brilliant, and so has Jabari Ahing in the midfield. Oh, and the commentator's curse never seems to fail as I praise him. He goes and miss traps, but definitely doesn't reflect the game that he has had thus far. Mason throws it in. Griffith turns nicely away from Ahing, who shows some nice skill here as Griffith. That's good play from him. And he gets the ball into the midfield. That's nice play from the number nine. Ball over the top there from Osain, but nobody able to get on the end of it. And it's a throw here for the Tobago Sharks. Here is Andal. Williams miscontrols it, but actually worked out for him in the end. And no, it doesn't. Mason did well to get the danger away. Battle on the side there. Devon Jostling just showing some of his skill. Brito clears it upfield. Crookshank gets under it nicely, but headed into the path. But he followed the ball well and did get away with it there. Did the Southern Oilers number 12. Ball over the top from Theo Hosein to his namesake. Theo Crawford, but just couldn't control it well there. The Theo connection just not clicking this time. Here 
is John, who does well to control that one, but he's well tackled by Griffith. And Ahing comes across again. Looking hard as usual there is Chike Ahing. Jostling again. Raising the ball, Mason just taking it off of him. With 20 minutes remaining in the second half of this one. The Tobago Sharks leading 4-1. Two goals from Hospitalis who has departed the field. Two goals from Quincy Williams who is still on the field. And this man here has been creative spark. Chike Ahing draws another foul. Justin Thomas does show a yellow card there to Kadeem Mason. I think that was probably for an accumulation of fouls. Ahing has been giving, giving him a lot of problems yellow this first half. Here's GK Ahing, plays it into Hippolyte, who has moved over to this left-hand side. That's a nice ball over the top into Jamel. This is his first bit of action, but can't get it under control. Wraps his leg there around Crawford, who turns well on it. It's a foul in the end. Yo Crawford up. And Justin Thomas is still disciplining somebody here. I think it's Kadi Mason who he's talking to. I don't know if Mason reacted negatively to the yellow card which he just received. Thomas seems to just be calming him down here. Doesn't like the reaction that Mason had. Him. seems to have sorted it out there. Justin Thomas Lovell just reassuring his teammate, telling him there's no need to really react in any way. We're through to the next round. We need to set our focus forward. And Russell launches it forward, slips in the process, and the ball goes straight into Chike Ai. Here's Hippolyte. That's a lovely ball, but that's well read by Emmanuel Russell. That's great play from him. He's very versatile. It's Emmanuel Russell. We see him all over the pitch. Has been good in that left back position to find the second half. And it's a nice ball over the top here for Francis. But Nikolai Iron spoils the party. And it is offside. As we see the Maloney Mavericks players walking on the side there, led by Captain Fantastic. He's been called throughout this tournament, Nathan Lewis. Exciting to see what they bring to the pitch against the Port of Spain Capitals in tonight's second game. And fouled again there. It must be said that both Theos do look very similar on the pitch very difficult for commentators these two guys they are similar in structure similar in playing style as well so very easy to be mixed up uh, the two theos and nevertheless two brilliant players as jamel throws it inside here's hippolyte who seems to have gone into a more central role now even then all over the pitch has hippolyte also one of the standout players in this game with two assists in the first half there's Andal. Ball finds its way through, but Mason this time is alert to it. And he should clear it upfield and puts it right into the feet of Chike Ahing. Could be problems here for the Oilers. Ahing goes with his right foot. But I was never going to disturb Akimo Williams. He apologizes to everybody in his attacking line there. Does Chike Ahing, to be fair to him? The performance he's put in today, I don't blame him for having a strike. Does deserve a goal, does the lad. So I wouldn't be too upset with him. And he wins back the ball again. Here is Hippolyte. Nicely there in the midfield. Beautiful play there from the Sharks. There have been some nice interchanges of play in the midfield for the Tobago Sharks. It must be said, and we could see it again there from Ahing. Here's Hippolyte. Uh, 
definitely are one of the teams that you expect to be a threat in the quarterfinals and knockout rounds of the GA Super Cup. As Ahing plays it into Kwasi Williams. They do have such great chemistry. Again, Sabero's on the far side. He was in acres of space there. Was Sabero, Jamel, but he just couldn't be found by Williams. Didn't raise his head fast enough. Brito into Ahing. Drops it off beautifully for Epaulet and turns away from Mutilal who tackles, but Epaulet dancing, having fun out there is Epaulet today. And that ball is split over the top. He's offside though. It's Williams who himself is on a hat trick, so he will be looking to get that hat trick. Launch over the top by Russell. That's a nice ball into Griffith. Can they get another goal here? The Southern Oilers. Griffith launches it but it goes straight out of play for a Tobago Sharks goal kick and it does seem as if the Sharks are readying up some substitutions Here is Jamel into Jabari Ahing. Plays it out wide to Chike Ahing. Tries to drop it off but was unsuccessful in his attempt. But wins back the ball well. Really has been a live wire today as Ahing. And that's a lovely wall over the top, Brito. But Russell was equal to it. He's under some pressure there from Jamel. Russell did excellent in the end. Here is Kadeem Mason, who is on a yellow card. Dances outside, launches it up, and he did well in the end. And Brito can pick up the pieces. Yeah, it's look as if the Oilers are going to make a substitution as well. Looks like Kevin Ramdas is being ready up for the boys in green. As they have a corner here. Justin Thomas signaling that the subs can now be made. It was risky play in the back there from the Tobago Sharks. And in the end, the good recovery. And a corner conceded. So it is Ramdas who comes on for the Oilers and Kadeem Mason who makes way, of course, he did have that yellow card, so maybe didn't want to risk getting a red. Here's Brito charging down and trying to play it through. And here is the substitute who just came on for the Sharks, Adrian Paul, who came off for Kwasi Williams and Jamel swings in a nice ball, but Russell clears nicely. So no hat trick for Williams. You would expect that Jostling just trying to rest his players. Doesn't want to risk any injury going into the knockout stages. Here's Jamel. That's nice footwork from him. Into Paul. But it's cleared away by Ramdas. And it's a throw in here for the Tobago Sharks. High up the pitch. And it does look as if Cohen will be coming on for the Sharks soon. Here is Jamel. Oh, that's nice footwork from him. Can he find a ball in the box? No, he has to go back to his teammate. It is Lukman. Fights off well, but wins a foul. I think it was actually Crawford. Or was it Hosein? Back doing the defensive work. Yes, it was Theo Crawford there. And it is a foul. Just pulling back the jersey and then the slide tackle. Got old man and no ball. Lukeman Brooks probably saying to the officials that that should have probably been a yellow card and a booking for Theo Crawford. As we approach the 80th minute here in this clash, the Tobago Sharks leading 4 1. Kwasi Williams 
with two. Shane Hospital is with two for the Sharks. And swung in by Sabero. Flicked on. Opportunity, Andal. It's blocked. Struck in again. Great save. Ahengo! And he was offside anyway. But the kind of form he's been in tonight, GK Aheng, you would have expected to see the net rattle. Wouldn't have counted. But he'll be disappointed with that one. Yeah, as you see it again here. Dangerous ball whipped in by Jamel. Couldn't get it clear there. A strike from Andel was well blocked. Another beautiful strike from Brito. And Aheng skied it over. Seems to be in some sort of discomfort here to Zakimo Williams. That was a great save. Not the first time he's been called into action. Did have a brilliant save in the first half. Off of his own teammate, actually. And the substitutions for the Sharks look like they will be made or after. But ball is back in play now. Here is Russell into Prince Ramdas. Russell. Launches it, slips again. It's not the first time he slipped in this game. Here's Ahing. That ball was inaccurate. Lukman finally does get it out to Jamel here. Here is Brito, who miscontrols as well. But he was under no pressure. Chabari Ahing turns nicely. And does spread it wide for Lukman Brooks. Jamel back into Brooks, but that's well read by Theo Crawford, who is driving at the Sharks' defense using some of his pace. It's a nice play from Crawford. Still has the ball here. Oh, this is lovely from Theo Crawford. And I actually thought he should have shot on his right foot. He did work the angle beautifully, but decided to cut back onto the left foot again. Amazing run, Messi esque from Theo Crawford as he danced in, toying with the Tobago Sharks defenders. Just thought he would have had a strike there, but he decided to cut on to the left and it was unconvincing. Cohen comes on. Chike Ahing making way. What a brilliant game he has had. And Kaden Karabai will be coming on for Jabari Ahing. So both Ahings making way. Of course, both of them did have brilliant games. Wonderful play from those two Ahing boys. Giving Karabi and Cohen a chance. Here is Devon Jostling. Of course, he does believe that now the game is in their hands. And just wants to give some match time and match fitness to some of his players. So that's actually good coaching there from Devon Jostling. And the Tobago Sharks technical team. And that's a nice ball from Brito. It's well dropped off by Adrian Paul. Launch two for the top. By Hippolyte into Jamel. Who tried to play it inside one time. Tried to cut inside actually. Oh, and they need to sort it out quickly here, do the Oilers. It was a bit stitchy. Jamel was lurking. Akimo Williams hesitated on the ball. And it's a corner for the Sharks. You see again there, lack of communication. Akimo Williams and Crookshank just couldn't work it out quick enough, allowing Jamel Sip to get it. And it is a corner here for the Tobago Sharks, which will be taken by Jamel. Swings it in near post. It's flicked on nicely. Oh, Andel! Didn't get the connection that he wanted just wide. And the Oilers get away with one. That ball went straight through the Southern Oilers. It was actually, I think, flicked on by the substitute, Karabi. Jamel whipped it in near post. Karabi, I think, got a little touch. Andel. Andal just couldn't get the touch that he needed to put it in the back of the net. There is Paul. Slip there. Oh, that's nice skill there from Emmanuel Russell. Theo Hussein drops it off beautifully for him. Russell again plays it over the top, but should be cleared away. No, it's not. It beats the man, and Griffith has an opportunity here. What can he conjure up? He plays it across the top of the box for Theo Crawford. 
who has a strike and that is over the bar. Another opportunity goes a begging for the Southern Oilers, but it has been pure dominance by the Tobago Sharks. It must be said, no disrespect to the Oilers. They have had some moments, but the Sharks really have been in control of this one. The passing, the movement, the finishing has been brilliant. And that's the reason that they do lead 4-1 and the reason that they do lead this Group D. This win will take them to 10 points. And here's Jamel, he's gotten in behind. Will he play it in? Will he have a strike? He cuts back nicely. Options in the box. A crossover to Hippolyte. Slows down the play and Karabi was in support. Play breaks down a little bit, but the ball still with the Sharks. Here's Jamel, does well. Cuts it back here into Hippolyte again. Will he have a strike this time? No, cuts on to the right foot. Hippolyte! Oh, and I think there was a deflection there. It came off the post. It just kissed the outside of the post. And it's a corner. You see it again here. Turn nicely there that Hippolyte trying to get himself on the goal scoring sheet. And I think it took a deflection off Crookshank. And a corner here in the late stages for the Tobago Sharks. And it's going to be taken by Jamel. Hips it in and Russell with some good defensive work. Jamel with a second bite to the cherry. Plays it back to Hippolyte who was first to the ball. Hussein was pressuring him. Gets through there to Hippolyte. Oh, this could be nice. Here is Hippolyte. He's still dancing. It's rolling all over the place. He's forced wide eventually. Here is Jamel once again. All the way back. Whips it in nicely. It's a decent looking ball. Paul flicks it on to Lukman Brooks, who I don't think was expecting it. Brooks cuts inside. Beats his man nicely. Can he find that ball inside? He cuts it back, but it was Mutilal there doing the defensive work. And oh, Mutilal actually did well in the end because it is a goal kick here for the Southern Oilers. Good skill outside there from Lukman. Mutilal blocking it off. And actually, I think Joshton Thomas did look over to his linesman there. And who did signal a corner. Jamel will be going across to take this one in the 88th minute. And here is a nice ball whipped inside. It's meet. Oh, good save again from Williams. And it was... Brooks on the far post who tried to get it in, but again, the aerial threat of the Tobago Sharks. It's actually surprising that they haven't scored any headers because they have gotten in the end of a good few set pieces. An ice ball from Jamel on the inside, and it was actually Andal who got the header on it, and a brilliant save by Williams, who has put down some acrobatic saves in this game as Akimo Williams. He has been pretty good despite conceding four goals. Taken nicely by Cohen into Karabi, the two substitutes who came on at the same time. Brito plays it over the top. Oh, it beats a man. Cohen is offside. And still finished it. That's a nice finish there from Cohen, but of course, it wouldn't count. The whistle has long gone. And as we do come into the closing stages of this one, just to remind you, this win for the Tobago Sharks will take them to 10 points at the top of Group D. They will advance to the quarterfinals as winner. Winners, the tournament, of course, not over for the Southern Oilers. They also advance second in the group on four points. Northeastern Cobras. They finished third in Group D on two points after playing their four games. Of course, this is the final game of Group D. And swung in there by Crawford, but gathered up by Kevin Graham. And anytime now, Joshton Thomas will be looking to blow the whistle. The full 90, we have about 20 seconds of normal time remaining. And additional time. If at all, will be minimal because there haven't been many stops in this second half. So I won't be surprised if Joshton Thomas blows his whistle at the mark of the 90.
Here is Jamel. He knocks it inside to Karabi. And gives it to Muti Lal, who clears it back. Lukman Brooks with a nice ball into Adrian Paul, who plays it through to Jamel. Muti Lal was there. Once again, all eyes on you, Justin. Nice ball through. Here's Theo Crawfordah. Can the Southern Oilers get something here? If they do, it will be through Theo Crawfordah. But that second touch there just let him down. Showed the ball. Too much of the ball, rather, to Brito, who came across and covered very well. But it is a corner for the Southern Oilers as we have gone past the 90 minute mark. Good pace from Crawford, but that touch right there just let him down and just allowed Brito to see the wall and clear it into the car park. So a late corner here for the Oilers. Can they reduce this goal gap to two? Corner taken shortly. <laughs> a short corner taken, rather. And it swung in on top of the box, but cleared away by the Sharks. And back in possession with the Oilers, Mark Griffith on the ball. Here is Emmanuel Russell. Showing some of his skill. Will he have a strike? Russell, that's a nice strike. Oh, and it's just wide. A great effort there from Emmanuel Russell. You do feel that if anybody deserved a goal, it was him for the Oilers because he has been brilliant this game. Griffith holding it up nicely. Russell, step over, dropping the shoulder nicely onto that left foot of his. And it was, I think Kevin Graham was beaten, but so was the post. And Justin Thomas does eventually blow his whistle the managers the coaches rather shake hands and that is the end of the first game here of the doubleheader in the GA Super Cup here at the Marvin Lee Stadium the Tobago Sharks solidifying their spot on top of Group D 4-1 two goals from Kwasi Williams two goals from Shane Hospitalis and Francis with the lone goal for the Southern Oilers which was actually the opening goal so don't go anywhere. We do have a second game for you here. And it is going to be the Maloney Mavericks against the Port of Spain Capitals in that second game for you. That one will be a good one as well. The Maloney Mavericks, of course, unbeaten thus far in the GA Super Cup. When we are back, we'll see if the Port of Spain Capitals will have something to say about that, of course. They can't finish on top of the group, but they would definitely want to send a message going into the quarterfinals. So don't go anywhere. We will be back for the second game of our doubleheader tonight in the GA Super Cup.